I have a story from the true dark net. Tor and protocols like it are an anonymity and plausible deniability source. Actual dark nets are kept well and truly hidden and cannot be found by any means available to the average channel. Trust me. Just one example out of maybe four or five that I have personally experienced with. Do take special note that this involves a great deal of luck. A friend of mine works at a small car insurance broker's office and asked me to fix a problem with his computer not recognising the office scanner on his network. This is not related, just how I ended up there. I brought my laptop and I notice a WEP wireless net with high signal strength. Out of curiosity, I turn on a sniffer to pick up the password while I enter the scanner. A few hours later, I'm leaving when I remember the sniffer. I got the password, connected, and poked around. So it's a basic home network. One system online with internet access. No firewall, apparently no antivirus, and for the hell of it, I drop in a back door before I leave. You never know what goodies you can run across. Well, I get home and start really digging through this computer. Just your average home computer. Most interesting stuff are some tax returns. There's a couple of text files that have what appear to be passwords, random characters, and a couple of names. Not much interesting, so I put my worm in it and leave it for maybe future use. Weeks later, I'm arranging some proxies for a few of my bots, when I realise that there are four new bots I hadn't set up myself. What I figured later is that the owner of that WEP machine, my friend's boss, had taken a file from it on a floppy, which my worm happily infected, which then spread to a few more machines he used. This is where the interesting stuff began. Two of those machines had internet access, of course, but they had apparently never been used to actually access the internet. They both ran Windows 98, completely unpatched. They apparently had internet access only because they were physically networked with other machines that were used for internet access. Each one of these machines had about three terabytes of storage mostly appeared empty, but was actually packed nearly full of encrypted bytes. The stuff that was easily viewable included huge amounts of personal information, including SSNs and tax IDs, names, addresses and lists of families, friends, sometimes pets, and sometimes a lot of detail, such as vehicles, clothing, height, weight, recent medical issues, and huge amounts of information. Not every listing had all of it, some were just names, and what they all had were dates. I couldn't make much sense of it, but what I could make sense of were the bank accounts. Thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of numbers, instructions, safety deposit boxes, all over the world. South Africa, Russia, Brazil, everywhere. Nothing but the basic identifying information, and another date. No note of what they might be. As I was picking through one of the two machines, I noticed a file being written. I figured someone was on the computer at that moment, but the only command events were coming from my worm. Nobody was using a mouse or keyboard, so then I figured it was an automated system process, and I watched what it was doing for a minute. Then I realised the computer was communicating on another network that wasn't a protocol I recognised. Because I knew when it started writing, and when it stopped, I was able to transcribe the entire file, which was about 78 megs. I assumed it was one file, and not a chunk of something else, and I was right. It was still encrypted, but it turned out to be fairly simple. Since it was one file, I had a few educated guesses about what a file size it was, and my first was right. It was a movie. MPEG format. The title was just random string. 
The video itself was an overhead view of three men sitting at a table. In the entire 15 minutes of the video, only one spoke. It sounded like gibberish. I figured it was code or he was nuts. He said things like, broken banana, stung red boot. He would pause and then say another strange sentence and kept on going for about 10 minutes. The other two just watched him. One was drinking what I assumed was coffee. Finally, he leaned back and asked if they would leave his daughter alone. The guy drinking the coffee just shook his head quickly and the talker started crying, really crying, hard. He leaned forward again and said another nonsense sentence and the video ended. Timestamp was about 20 minutes before the video was uploaded to the machine I got it from. I had a really weird feeling about it, but my best guess at the time was that it was some kind of clip from a movie I hadn't seen, and what I saw was a streaming broadcast. The timestamp on the file just being the time it was sent. In it, the man that had spoken the first one was crying like a baby. He had apparently done unspeakable things with what appeared to be the corpse of a young girl. With her throat cut and blood all over the table, the same one the three men had been sitting at in the first video. The other two men were still in the room, standing on either side of the room watching, smoking cigarettes. I didn't finish watching it. I only got about a minute or so in before it sank what I was seeing. I've seen a lot in my time. This was not a movie. I cleaned my traces from those systems and haven't looked back. What I'm still finding hard to believe is that from the computer I'd originally hacked, these other systems got infected by a floppy. As near as I can tell, the two storage computers were on opposite sides of the globe, one in LA and one in Beijing. The WEP computer I found in Dallas, and two of the other infected computers were in Winnipeg, as far as I know. My friend's boss had not left the country, his brother-in-law had been visiting at the time, though. 